Good morning. Today's class we see the but the first year B.Sc. Nursing Anatomy Question Paper of August 2020-21 of 2016 scheme. So the first question was describe the classification of words based on its shape and describe with example list the part of the vertebra. So here we can see the bone classification, its features, functions and examples. The bones are classified into long, short, flat, irregular and sismoid. Long are cylindrical like shape, longer than its wide, its functions leverage and the examples are femur, tibia, fibula, metatarsals, humerus, ulna, radius, metacarpals and phalanges. Short bones are cube like shape approximately equal in length, width and thickness. Flat bones are thin and curved, irregular bones are complex in shape and sismoid bones are the small and round embedded in the tendons. These are the bone classification and these are the classification the features, functions and the examples are here. So the second part of this question is describe the vertebra. Each vertebra is made up of the vertebral body in the front, the facet body joints in the back and the pedingles which connect the vertebral body to the facet joints. So the body is, is the large, heavy anterior part which have a form of short cylinder. Its function is to support the weight. Superior and inferior surfaces are rough and flat. The facet joints in the back of the spine, there is a hinge-like structures called facet joints are located. These joints link the vertebra together along with the disc in front allowing for complex spinal motion. These joints may be injured by lifting or straining, severe twisting or hyperextension. And pedicles. These are the short, stout process attached to the superior part of the body on each side. The superior and inferior surfaces are concave and they are called superior and inferior vertebral. <coughs> Sorry, vertebral notches. Then lamina. <coughs> These are the thin plates of bone forming the roof of the vertebral foramen where they unite in the median plane. The spinous process arises from its junction. The spinous process project posterior inferiorly. They overlap vertebra below. They give attachment to the ligaments and the muscles. So the parts of a bone in this vertebra consists of its body, face and joints, pedicles and lamina. Second question is draw and label the part of the nephron and describe its anatomy. It's a picture. It's a simple picture. You can draw for the anatomy textbook for more pictures of a nephron. In applied anatomy, disease of the nephron predominantly affect either glomerular or tubules. The glomerular disease include diabetic nephropathy, glomerular nephritis and IgA nephropathy, renal tubular disease including acute tubular necrosis, renal tubular acidosis and polycystic kidney diseases. The third question is the repetition of the previous question paper. It is previous question. Draw and label the parts of elementary tract. Describe the applied anatomy of any one of the parts. This question has been repeated many times. I have been explained it many times but still again it will be explained. So this is the picture of an elementary tract and we can see stomach in detail. Stomach is the most dilated part of elementary tract. It extends from the cardiac end to the pyloric end. At the upper end it is continuous with esophagus and the lower end it is continuous the duodenum. The relations of stomach anteriorly there are diaphragm, liver, the left lobe of the liver and anterior abdominal wall. Posteriorly omnibusa that is lesser sac, pancreas, left kidney and adrenal gland, spleen and splenic artery. Superiorly esophagus and diaphragm, inferiorly and laterally transverse mesocolon. The blood supply to the Stomach is by left and right gastric arteries, gastro omental arteries, short gastric arteries, posterior gastric arteries and gastro duodenal arteries. The venous drainage is by right and left gastric veins which end in the portal vein. The nerve supply, parasympathetic that is the vagus nerve, cranial nerve 10 and sympathetic that is from celiac plexus T5 to T12. The parts of the stomach are cardiac fundus, body and pyloric part. Applied aspect of the stomach include congenital hypertrophic pyloric stenosis and gastric ulcers can 
and carcinoma of the stomach and vagotomy that is a treatment for the ulcers and eclo eclohydria occurs when the stomach cannot produce hydrochloric acid which is essential for the digestion and gastrectomy is the removal of the stomach a part of the stomach then type of neuroglia this refer in 2019 2016 scheme it has been asked the type of neuroglia include oligodendrocytes astrocytes microglia epidermal cells which also called glial cell so we can see one by one neuroglia are the group of supportive cells for the neurons further they maintain the myelin sheath which provide nutrient support moreover they helps in hemostasis also it is within the cns central nervous system and peripheral nervous system the main function of neuroglia is to protect and maintain the optimum functioning of the nervous system these cells are commonly called neuro glia or neuroglia further they are linked with central nervous system and peripheral nervous system the types of neuroglia include oligodendrocytes astrocytes microglia and epidermal cells and neuroglia also called as glial cells and first we will see microglia they are the phagocytic cell they engulf pathogens thus it serves as a defensive role within the nervous system further it has a flexible shapes its form tends to keep changing mainly after it have engulf in a foreign body they have present throughout the brain and the spinal cord second is oligo oligo den then drosites they are the glial cells which present the central nervous system further they help in making the myelin sheath the sheath that enhances the axons then astrocytes they get their name from astro meaning star and the site meaning cell the star shaped cells are found in the central nervous system they provide structural integrity they fill up the spaces between the neurons moreover they also have tiny little feet called perivascular end feet they wind around the blood cells once that constitute the blood brain barrier and the last one is epidermal cells then the of three variants there are ependymocytes tiny cytes and corodial epithelial cells similarly these cells are part of central nervous system they deal with aspects of csf the epidermomets promote pre movement of molecules it does it does so between neurons and cerebellar spinal fluid further the tan sites respond to alterations in the hormonal level it does within the blood derived hormones neuroglia functions they offers essential nutrients include oxygen to the neurons next it helps to create the myelin sheath it also helps to make homeostasis within the neurons and destroy pathogens so it's help to protect the neurons finally they provide structural stability it forms support structure that neurons can inhabit structure of eyeball it's already referred in october 2019 2010 scheme the eyeball is a bilateral and spherical organ which houses the structures which is responsible for the vision it lies in the bony cavity within the facial skeleton known as the bony orbit anatomically the eyeball can be divided into three parts fibrous vascular and inner layers the vitreous the, the structures which can in the eyeball consists of the vitreous body vitreous body is the transparent gel which fills the posterior segment of the eyeball and which marked by narrow canal which runs from the optic disc to the lens the hyaluronic canal it is on a fetal remnant then lens lens is the eye located anteriorly then anterior and posterior chambers there are two fluid filled chambers in the eye known as anterior and posterior chambers the anterior chamber located between cornea and the iris and the posterior chamber between iris and ciliary process the eyeball receive blood primarily from ophthalmic artery this is the branch of internal carotid artery arising immediately distal to the cavernous ca sinus the ophthalmic artery gives rise to the many branches which supply different components of the eye central artery of the retina is the most important branch supplying its internal surface retina occlusion of this artery will quickly result in blindness main drainage by superior inferior ophthalmic veins that drain into the cavernous sinus a dual venous sinus in close proximity to the eye next is the structure of ureters it also have been referred in 2010 20 2016 scheme 
The ureters are the bilateral muscular tubular structures which is responsible for taking urine from one kidney to the urinary bladder for storage prior to the excretion. From collecting ducts, the urine passes to the calcase, the renal pelvis, which marks the beginning of the ureters. The arterial supply to the ureters come directly and indirectly from abdomen aorta. There are no ganglia in the ureters, however, it receives both sympathetic and parasympathetic innervation. The ureters are collapsible S-shaped channels, each about 25 cm in length, the widest at the renal pelvis and narrow progressively as they enter the urinary bladder in concavity of the true pelvis. The lumen of each ureter is lined by a mucosal layer that is transitional epithelium which accommodate and the increase in the pressure accompanies increase in the volume of urine leaving the kidney thereby aiding minimize the rupturing of the ureters. These conduits have several infolding caused by multiple layers of smooth muscle throughout the ureteral wall. The wall of the ureters consists of three layers. They are outer layer is fibrous cord with supporting layer of fibrous connective tissue. The middle layer of muscular cord consists of inner circular and outer longitudinal smooth muscle and the main function of this layer is the peristyles that is to propel the urine and the inner layer is the mucosa that is the transition epithelium that continues with the lining of renal pelvis and urinary bladder. This layer secretes mucus which cords and protects the surface of the cell. The, the gluteal muscle, this also has been referred in 2017, that is 2010 scheme question number 3. The gluteus maximus is the main extensor muscle of the hip. It is the largest and outermost of three gluteal muscles and makes up the large part of the shape and appearance of each side. It is thick fleshy mass. It is a quadrilateral shape forms prominence of the buttocks. It arises from the posterior gluteal line of the inner upper ilium, a bone of the pelvis, as well as above it to the iliac crust and slightly below it, from the lower part of the sacrum and side of the coccyx, the tailbone, from the upper neurosis of the erector spinae and the sacral tuberous ligament and fascia covering gluteus medius. The function is gluteus maximus straighten the leg at the hip when the leg is flexed at the hip. Gluteus maximus extend to the bring the leg to the straight portion. And taking its fixed point below, it acts upon the pelvis supporting it and trunk in the head of the femur. This is particularly obvious in standing on one leg. The most powerful action is to cause the body to regain the erect position after stooping by drawing the pelvis backward, being assisted in this action by biceps femoris, semi tendinous, semi membranous, and abductor magnus. Glotius maximus is a tensor of the fascia lata and by its connection with the iliotibial band steadies the femur on the articular surface of the tibia during standing when the extensor muscles are relaxed. The lower part of the muscle also acts as an abductor and external rotator of the limb. The upper fibers act as abductors of the hip joints. Parts of fallopian tube. Fallopian tube is described as having four parts. First is the fimbriae, that is a finger-like ciliated projections, which capture the ovum from the surface of the ovary. Then infundibulum is the funnel-shaped opening near the ovary to which the fimbriae is attached. And ambula, the widest section of the uterine, uterine tubes, the fertilization usually takes place in the ambula of the fallopian tube. Then isthmus is the narrow section of the uterine ambula to the uterine cavity, which connect to the uterine cavity. List the organs of male reproductive system. The male reproductive system consists of semi seminal vesicles, erectile tissue, scrotum, testis, penis, epididymis, urethra and prostate glands, and most differences. The muscles involved in the respiration. The primary inspiratory muscles are diaphragm and external intercostals. The accessory inspiratory muscles are the stenocleidomastoid mastoid muscle, the scalus anterior medius and posterior, pectoralis major and minor, inferior fibers of serratus anterior and la Slatismus dorsi, serratus posterior, superior may help in the inspiration. Salivary glands. 
the three pairs of major salivary glands, parotid glands, submandibular glands, and sublingual glands. Parotid glands are larger salivary glands, submandibular glands at about the size of walnut, submandibular glands located below the jaw, sublingual glands. Sublingual glands are the smallest of the major salivary glands. The almond-shaped structures are located under the floor of the mouth below the either side of the tongue. The parts of pituitary gland, it composes of two lobes, anterior and posterior, also called neurohypophysis or paris nervosa, which intermediate lobe that joins to these two regions. Then differentiate between rectum and anal canal. The anal canal is the most terminal part of the lower GI tract or the large intestine, which lies between the anal walls, that is the anal orifice in the perineum, below the rectum above and the rectum above. The description on this topic is just upwards and how this region usually examined in the clinical practice. The last several inches of the large intestine closest to the anus. The rectum is the straight 8 inch chamber that connects the colon to the anus. The rectum's job is to receive the stool from the colon. Let know that there is a stool to be evacuated and to hold the stool until the evacuation happens. Gallbladder and urinary blood. The gallbladder stores urine whereas gall, the, the, the bladder stores urine whereas the gallbladder stores the bile. The bladder receives urine from the kidney whereas the gallbladder receives the bile from the liver. Bladder in the pelvis and a part of urinary system, whereas the gallbladder is the abdomen as a part of digestive system. External and internal ureter sphincter muscles in the bladder helps to control the urination, whereas the smooth muscle fibers in the fibromuscular layer control the bile ejection. Thank you for listening.